Hi guys, it's a new episode of 343, episode 25 actually, uh, and we've actually been doing this for a year now, can you believe it? Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop rambling about that. I'm your host, AF, joined, uh, joined by my co-hosts, Jason, Nikita, and Ziad. How's things going with you guys? Thank All you guys good. Uh, Lekker, Lekker. Festive, festive. Much better now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Much better now. I know we'll do that to you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's... Good for the wins live, guys. Yo, jeez, man. I see Southampton was uh, giving them some support on, on the socials, asking if they want some counting. So. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that was super funny. He's Edmunds interacting now is actually more exciting than anything else. And these guys 100%. can take each other off for, you know, for days. Yeah, man. Like that, like the fact that Liverpool now has, they finally have a lift off for the season, Nikita. Mm. <laughs> that was an insane performance and actually That's proving to be the final nail in the coffin of scott parker unfortunately uh but that uh, yeah how are you how are you feeling about that win i'm really not feeling good about going into a game at home against bournemouth and worrying that <laughs> we might drop points uh the last the first couple of weeks of the season have been tumultuous at best i mean we've had i think 11 or 12 guys on the physio table since the start of the season we're playing with basically no midfield I mean, I say that with the utmost respect to James Wilner and, and Jordan Anderson, but really, uh, I mean, to play with guys that age in a high-tempo league, in a high-tempo kind of formation is, is not the way you want to kick off your season. And I really think this is a big season for Liverpool in the sense that, you know, I think we, we're probably be one of the top eight teams with the fewest guys going to the World Cup. Uh, I think, you know, that, Playing that kind of the number, those kind of number of games are going to impact a lot of the other squads. You know, your Spurs, City in this particular, which which I believe would allow us to go on a good run after the World Cup. But to start off like that was really shaky. But you know, <laughs> if there's any way to come back into the nine or win at home, not something we see very often on the clock. Um, I think last year with the United, you know, you you score the goals and then you kind of take off the pressure. But it was nice to see some appetite from the team after three kind of really dismal performances. Um, but uh, yeah, onwards and upwards. Tough fixtures this week. Another two tough fixtures. I mean, Newcastle look really, really, really good. Um, again, City in particular. And then to have that mental uh, capacity to come back against Wolves very late on. ASM, oh, what a goal but, that uh, was, eh? Jeez. What a goal. I initially thought he shinned yeah. it, but I mean, it was just so clean. Even if he did, it was the most beautifully yeah. clean shin ever. I have been raving about that guy since last year. I, I said last season, I think in our kickoff yeah. show, that we he's my favorite, the most exciting player in the Premier League. And I think he's just kind of proving that more and more and delivering more and more in, you know, attacking prowess, goals, assist in yeah. that final third. So he's looking really good. Uh, I know he might be might be injured for for tomorrow night, to Wednesday night. But I think Newcastle is is looking looking really good this season. So I think they're going to give us a tough go at Anfield. Yeah, no, I think so. Also, sorry, Eric, just to jump in there. Yeah. I think with with Saint Max, it's looking now like there's actually more end product to all of the showboating yeah. that previously yeah. hogged most of his game. Um, when you when you look at them, they they very fluid at the moment, and yeah, it's just I mean, I think he's he's only one of the two people that I've seen actually run at at Kyle Walker and, and not be afraid with with the other being mm. Sadio Mane, who would never ever give Walker an inch to breathe. But Saint Saint Max had Walker literally. He was so like like a like a Bambi on ice. Something yeah, he was like, nervous. So eh? nervous. Yeah. He was nervous. He was so nervous, and uh. I think that. Might be a might be something that other tricky wingers could potentially look at and say, okay, maybe Carl Carl Walker as fast and as mad as he is, maybe just to run at him, just put some pressure on him. Yeah, then, that's that's a brilliant like, point, eh? I mean, yeah. there were times where Saint Max actually outran him, and I was like, yeah. I was confused, I was utterly perplexed. Yeah. Um, I feel that's such a big part of Carl Walker's game, other than the fact that he's arguably, I know, probably underrated, but probably one of the best English like right or left or any back <laughs> to be mm. quite honest with you has ever yeah. played for England I really rate him almost as highly as Ashley Cole not as highly but but pretty up there so it's, yeah. It's, yeah and Maximum looks to be adding the the, the goods 
uh, still not so sure about Chris Wood up there, but he mm -hmm. seems to be the business. And then, of course, we've got the Merseyside Derby, which, I mean, as you all know, is not something you can call with derbies. Um, I'm not really interested in losing to Everton. They are absolutely trash. But then you never know what can happen in the derby. And I suppose my biggest concern about the derby is how many injuries we sustain. Um, that seems to be the one feature, especially at Goodison Park, where we tend to lose players quickly and sharply and for a long period of time. So, aren't you, aren't you maybe excited about the prospect of getting Frank fired after getting Scott Parker fired? I mean, uh, it's a warning, you know, we're always that. getting people fired. We get all the Man United coaches fired. You see, we're trying to keep ETH in a job by falling over last week. And now, nah, man, uh, I'm over that, Sead. I'm over that. Um, I was actually really disappointed. I think it's worth mentioning, guys, uh, for the guys that watch, really disappointed by Borden, the sacking of, of Scott Parker. We chatted about, about it in our group chat earlier today. What a shock. Yeah. Three. I mean, yeah. he had absolutely awful fixtures and no support in the trans market. I mean, if you compare, yeah, if, if you compare Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest, I mean, the, the the way they've taken to the Premier League is like chalk and cheese. I mean, like not, yeah. Nottingham Forest, they they've perf they haven't performed badly. They've performed well, but like they've been backed in the market. Like, I mean, what eighteen signings? Yeah. I think Jason mentioned. Um, earlier while we were chatting, uh, they've they, they've made eighteen signings. They're on the verge of making another one. So, um, yeah, co compare that to to Scott Parker and Bournemouth. I mean, we they just he hasn't been backed at all. And um, yeah, I think Ziad, you mentioned something earlier as well. Yeah, I mean, look with with Bournemouth, it's it's fairly simple. They I don't think they really too worried about staying up. They uh, counting on that parachute money when they drop back down parachute payments, and they find to just yo-yo through. I don't agree with it, but it seems to be the mm. case where I think also, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't Scott Parker the manager of Fulham the last time they came up, and they yeah. invested in yeah. tons of players, and they went back down almost immediately. Yeah. So you know, maybe on that pass, the guys are just thinking, you know, what, you're not going to invest. If we go down, we'll take the money and try and come back up again. But Scott Parker seemed defeated. I mean, I was a press conference of his after, I think it was the City game. We were just like, we didn't expect to do anything. We expected to do so. I'm not surprised. And a comment like that is just, if you look at the optics, yeah. unfortunately, uh, for him, it wasn't going to end well. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, but yeah, moving on. I have a quick question for you guys. Are we back in 2004? Are the <laughs> Invincibles back? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy. Like United, oh, United, United is just getting the 200 million players. Player. Yeah. The Kudo is going to log out now <laughs> and not finish this recording. Yeah, guys, yeah I've, got guys. To, I've got point to watch try that would be better than having this nonsense conversation. Okay, that, okay, that yeah. is maybe a little exaggeration because I watch Paint Run. That's boring as well. This is gonna be <laughs> Yeah, no, but, I was I was just gonna say now, like Arsenal started the season like quite nicely. Like they they actually look like a wild wild oil machine and they yeah. they they are playing attractive football and I mean I think Gabriel Jesus has been like a, a, a very big part of a part of that jigsaw. Um but yeah, they like with all with all due respect to the teams that they have beaten they haven't really played a team that has challenged them, so to say, yet. Um, I don't know, Jason, Ziad, who, do you want, who wants to go first between the two of you? <laughs> That's fine. I'll I'll jump in. Um, yeah, I have to 100% agree. These these teams that we played, it's it's maybe fixtures that we, we didn't previously do well in. So on, on that aspect, it was good to actually go to Crystal Palace and, and beat them. If you've followed that uh, Arsenal doc that has just recently uh, finished now. We we went to Crystal Palace and they show a side that just mentally couldn't keep up with anything that I was doing, anything any of those guys. Like Jordan Ayew, he has the four good games, right? It's two against Arsenal, two against Man City. <laughs> Without a shadow of a doubt, those are the only two games Jordan Ayew turns up in. Zaha completely harasses any right back that we had. And yeah, beating Crystal Palace after we had lost there. Then we had Leicester, which 
I mean, Leicester's going through a very, very tumultuous time at the moment. So that, I was expecting a win. Um, Bournemouth also going through a very sus time. But then Fulham actually it, it just brought us maybe back down because people are saying, okay, now let's, let's actually push on. But Fulham just sat and then waited the chance and waited for us to make a mistake. And then they actually just scored. Um, oh, Mitrovic rode Gabriel like a pony. Mitro, literally, <laughs> Gabriel like, went to the bench, asked for sugar water, came back and then managed to get to the end in that corner. Um, but yeah, like, like looking at, I think one of the key things besides, I mean, Jesus, it, it's also finalizing all of our signings early, getting them integrated, mm-hmm. firstly. But also all of the signings, majority of them now have come in and they're like pre-improven, right? So Zinchenko slots in, knowing the league well, mm-hmm. knowing the, the system that Arteta wants to play. And I, I, I'd rank it as Jesus and then Zinchenko being as two of our influential players at this moment in time, just for for the energy that they bring. Obviously, title winners coming in, bringing a different order. And then also just that, that willingness to always compete. Like Jesus lost the ball, wins it back, makes something happen. Zinchenko like slots into the midfield, frees up Xhaka to go wide, and if he loses it, closes down immediately. So it, it is nice. I don't think we should get ahead of ourselves. I think Villa, you know, wounded dog could really come out, and then also Man United over the weekend. It's it's yeah. really the, the, those sort of games. It's so hard to call because regardless of the form Arsenal's in, as soon as we go to Old Trafford, it's like demons of Years gone by that that come out and suddenly the guys are not yeah, the boss, I mean, on control. Are the, are the demons I mean, coming out of the holes in the duck there or what? Yeah, <laughs> the stadium. <laughs> then suddenly the ref uh, left his yellow cards at home for United, but Arsenal's getting all of Crazy. them. So it's Crazy. yeah, man. It's just that I, I think once we play against teams that are of a higher standard, with no offense to the teams that we had played. Um, I think that will really be the true test. But yeah, Invincibles, yo, I'd quietly write that on a page, keep it away and see if <laughs> that thing comes through at the end of the season. But yeah, but J- not, Jason, didn't you enjoy seeing, seeing Leno stuff up a corner but being on the other team? I thought that was quite fun. <laughs> yo, that I've was seen like, that happen that so many times right? because I saw, in the Arsenal jersey. Yo. I saw Leno and I saw two of my centre-backs and it literally took me back that I actually started shaking a bit. <laughs> And then it was actually because we had scored and not because my defenders and keeper got mixed up, you know. Um, but yeah, what a, yeah. What a yeah. weird one. I turned into prime uh, Manuel Neuer, prime Oliver Kahn, obviously. Everybody <laughs> that comes back to the Emirates has to. But then in the last 10 minutes, you was prime Lena also. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Suppose you got a bit of everything. Yeah. It was more like prime Ramsdale when Ramsdale was playing at Bournemouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting him really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I can I at least give Arsenal one compliment? You guys have arguably had easier fixtures, but still taking maximum points from those fixtures should not be overlooked. Because I mean, you guys now have Europa League starting in the next week or so, and you know, tougher, tougher guys. I know you've got Spurs in a couple of weeks as well. So I mean, taking but, four out yeah. of four, it's it's no now, easy fate. So and now with the congested uh, schedule as well, like with the World Cup mm, coming yeah, up, and absolutely having now, yeah, like, take the many, points many, you know and offer, and, and yeah, yeah, and, 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 and see what you can do for the rest of the season. Mm. The midfield, two injuries already, so. Um, yeah. I don't know if they're going to go buy someone or just the easy move is to slot Zinchenko in the midfield. But Zinchenko is injured as well now. Zinchenko, oh. like no, he'll, he'll be yeah, back. Yeah, the yeah, small minor like... injury, but oh, okay. part is longer and El Nini even longer. So, I don't know. El Nini injured find as well? Some bodies. Yeah, you know, El like, Nini uh, is actually a while. Long, long period, yeah. Uh, long time. No, okay, it's I was just surprised to know that that guy's 30. Who knew? <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm shocked. Yeah, but, <laughs> but like, it's the importance of Sathya. But yo, I think this is like Essien. Essien, back in his career, he, he gets one knock. He's out for all season. You, we must yeah, because they go from being 30 to 35 in one season. Yeah, yeah no. no, no. Yeah. But now, yeah, like, the, the, the one player that's, like, I, I don't know, man, like, where this guy's consistency lies, but... Chakas look good this season, man. Like the, in the four I games. Don't, 
Don't it talk looks so quickly. Sí, sí. Nah, Those man. guys just try to put the markers on the OER. Nah, man. Nah, man. Nah, man. Nah, man. Nah, man. Every night of the week. For real. For real. For real. Like, like he's, he's impressed me a lot, like, in, in the starting of the season. And, I mean, like, this is the first time that I've seen him, like, stitch together so many good performances back to back um, without, like, messing up or anything like that. And he looks quite, I like, composed and a, confident in his role. Yeah. Uh, it's a classic case of he can't be the best player on the team. And he needs to just be supported and, and all his weaknesses have to be hidden. <laughs> and it's yeah. it's yeah. currently the whole system is set up for him to thrive. The only thing is with with some of his injuries now, the defensive duties of whoever comes into part name is gonna be interesting mm. to see. And then also he's due for one of these, you know, interesting reactions to something. Like you said, Jason was talking about the, the all or nothing doc. And in there he said, right, when he hacked someone down, he's like, Yeah, well, at least we didn't go one nil down. So yeah, I kept them from yeah. scoring. Yeah. It's, it's going to happen again, that, but that Liverpool game, it's just man, something you have to live with, man. It's your teammate. Else, man. He's going to do it. And it is yeah. what it is, but it's a one way of looking at the it. squad keeps strengthening yeah. around him, it should be fine. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, you know what it is, right? So this, this new system obviously affords him more freedom to actually go forward. So when he actually plays for like Switzerland and there, he's like, obviously people love him. Yeah, he's right? like a number 10. And then he's like, yeah. Yeah, like, and it's like performance after performance this guy is getting like a 7.9 out of 10 when you look at these match ratings um, maybe that, that armband and everything that surrounded him when he was captain and, and all of those situations played a very big part in uh, how he was received naturally I mean has yeah. to be Yeah, a guy was, was telling the fans to actually talk more that's just like that's crazy I'd, I'd never be able to do that eh? but yeah. now it seems like there are other players, like you say, that are actually taking more of the line. Mm-hmm. So, okay, Odegaard's putting in good performances. Jesus yeah. actually does more and more of the attentions on him. So, it means that somebody like Shaka can actually come in and he can just quietly go about Because he's, he's still a good pass of the ball. Still yeah. has a very good shot. He, he can pick some somewhat of a, of a decent pass. So, yeah. Mm. It'd be nice if he had a right foot though, but... Uh... You're going to be perfect this yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. No, that right, that yeah. right, yeah. That yeah. right, yeah. right yeah. foot, like, it does nothing. It's just yeah. there to run and maybe tackle someone for a red card. But other late than tackle, that, yeah, late like, late. Ankle tap. Yo, he does nothing with that foot. Absolutely nothing. But that's all left-footed players, man. Like, they, they're yeah. so left-footed that it's I was... actually... Salah was a tap in this weekend, actually. Should have been 10 yeah. or 11. Uh, yeah. Don't get me started yeah. on that day. Yeah. Uh, no, I was like so no more. Yeah, I feel <laughs> Jeez. No. But uh, we'll... Like... But look here, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You keep <laughs> bringing it on to us. Let's talk about United uh, smashing their transfer charts to sign their second most expensive player in history. Let's leave Xhaka <laughs> out because apparently Anthony also has only a left foot. Yo. Yeah, he probably uh, does. I haven't seen much four, of him. I, 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 right. I, I haven't seen much of him, and I doubt John Murtha has even seen much of him. Um, yeah, like I, I've, somebody I've put absolutely... a timeline or something, man. They need to say this guy looks like he's gonna bring the people. Yeah, the comp, every the single goal, goal, goal. winger <laughs> that's come from that Eredivisie has failed in the Premier League. When was the last time a good winger, a, a winger, has come to the Premier League? And actually, like, let, like, set it to like the pay. What happened there? Yeah, that <laughs> didn't really set it to the light. It was uh, more like, uh, there was nothing alive. There was yeah. lots of tapping, but nothing yeah, alive. Yeah. Over yeah. Mars, I, I think over Mars. Over Mars, yes. yeah. Over Mars, probably. And, and, and I was 20 that? odd years ago. She's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am saying it's 2004, what, right? So. <laughs> 20 years ago. I, I was going to say Ryan Bubble, but. Nah, yeah. we, we don't want about sitting a light, guys. Not putting yeah, out the not, fire. Not sitting the clubhouse a light or something. That's a very different thing. Yeah. I mean, I think you've got to have faith, right? Uh, no, you've yeah, got to have faith, but 100 million is... is yeah, oh, it's, it's a lot of money. Yeah, but they're still worrying about the money. It's not your money. At least the Glazers are not going to have That's not money. Ma- no, definitely not. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's uh, you already see Sky Sports inflating the price with every news bulletin they make. Then it's... <laughs> 
then it's 85 million, then the next bullet, then it's 93 million, then the next bullet, then it's 98 million. And then now, just before we started, it was 102 million. But so, how, how does it feel to have your own Nicholas Pepe? Never mind. Oh, uh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Please, yeah. Don't, don't make the assessment so picky, man. Don't be like that. Yeah. Give me, give Didn't me that guy go out alone now? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. went to Nice. Pepe no, came in a few good occasions, so I'm not going to slander mm. my guy. Pepe no, went out alone. alone. Lukaku goes but out see, alone. But see, that's the... That's the thing about these fees, man. It's nothing against yeah. the player. But when you mm-hmm. weigh up, like, how much did Bayern pay for Sadio Mane? Sure. Spend the money, it you know what I mean? Like, it was like a smash and grab there, no? wasn't it? Was like, how much did like, Arsenal pay oh. for, for Jesus? You know, it's like, if you think about what your money is getting, you know, it's just crazy. It doesn't make mm-hmm. any sense anymore. It's, yeah. No, but you know what? See, at the beginning of the transfer window, I was thinking, thank goodness. The one thing COVID has done is recalibrated Transfer prices. Yeah. We're getting Oaks going for the right amount of money. Zeus, what was that, 40 odd? Mine, yeah, that's about odd. the right. Yeah, and then you see Man United getting like properly walloped in the transfer market. And you're just like, guys, we've done all the hard work here. We suffered through a global pandemic and now yeah. you guys are spending like, you know, all the monies. But, you know, it is what it is. And now I, Liverpool uh, have to like, put 42 million in for Brighton player. It's never going to happen. Never going to happen. The market if, you think, yeah, if you think the Glazers are stingy, like we are stingy, uh, I mean, there's absolutely no way. That, I think that Brian Licker game against United was the first first game of the season. Eh? What's it? I said, Moises. Yeah, there's no way. He's 20 or something. <laughs> He's played for Colombia or what's it, Venezuela, like once, I think. There's no way. And yeah, like, like Nikita yeah. says, nah. If it's G, no way. Nah, I'm literally, I'm pretty sure I'm getting a phone call and I'm pretty sure with FSG asking me to pay for free and a bag and a Gatsby. Like, that's probably mm-hmm. what they're trying to ask me. So, I've actually There's asked no if FSG come up, so I can tell you. So, FSG is quite interesting, right? Because I, I think I've spoken about this before with a baseball team that they own. Uh, but yeah. what they've done, or what, what they're actually doing at the moment is they're trying to get an NBA team. But they don't want a current team. They want the expansion team in Vegas. Mm. So mm. they're putting all their attention into setting up the finances for an expansion team in Vegas. So all mm. the things you see now with the team, this is their, their MO. They, mm. they want to compete in a window. But as soon as those players age, they mm. then sell them off or they don't reinvest. So like with the baseball team at the moment, they have two players who are in the top 10 in, in the league. And both players haven't signed an extension. They haven't paid. Because mm-hmm. they're going to have to pay. We're talking about maybe seven year, seven to 10 year deals for each player. And you know, you're talking 200 million over the, yeah. the span of those deals. And both players haven't signed. So it's just what they do. Like they're going to get younger. They're going to strip the team down. But they will, they will compete again. It's just mm-hmm. that you know, it's not a priority. Mm, it's in cycle. All the time. Yeah. It's a cycle, yeah. yeah. And it's strange because we we kind of watch football in a different way, right? We always want to be competing for the title. We want to be in the Champions League or whatever. But the way the American owners work, they're very happy to strip it down and spend a year or two losing and then come back up. But the European football circuit is very different. It's not mm-hmm. as forgiving as the yeah. NBA, for example, like if you miss our Champions League, that revenue drop is crazy. Plus, That's you right. can't attract the same players. So, it has a sure. different impact, which I think the American owners just don't, don't grasp. Like, when, when the guy took over at Chelsea, he wanted to trade players and they had to tell him. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> that's not, that's not how it works here. Because I guarantee you, if it was done the American way, Ronaldo would be playing for Chelsea because they would have traded it for his contract. It's an expiring. So... In American sport, expiring contracts are super valuable because it's going to come off the books. They would have traded for Ronaldo. They would have given United years to young players. Take them. If they pan out, they pan out. And if they don't, oh, well, whatever. And they would have had a year of Ronaldo. Commercially, they would have just, you know, run with it. And at the end of his contract, it's like, thanks for coming. Bye. Yeah. But it doesn't work like that. This is football. 
Yeah, I, I think Americans have best buys for there. You know, there's just so many games that, that you cannot physically spend yeah. as much time or be as attentive to your to your club as what we are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To football, that is. So yeah. I totally agree with you. And, I, you know, everyone or a lot of people are FSG out or whatever it is. And I'm very happy that I've delivered every single trophy that exactly. we could have won. Yeah. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I, I I didn't see a Premier League in my lifetime. I saw it for the first time when I turned thirty. So mm. I'm stoked. I, I cannot be yeah. unhappy. We secured club for another couple more years. I mean, yeah, and they've life already, is not that bad. <laughs> they've already replaced the front line if you look at it, right? The new front three essentially is Jota, and, and, and the and midfield. Mimis. To be honest, and it's yeah, fine. and to be honest, and, the midfield as well. I think Cavalio and Harvey Elliott. Should they yeah, avoid any disasters in injuries? I think those two those two guys are going to be brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I'd actually yeah, love I'm, to see Trent get a run in midfield. I just want to see how he plays as a midfielder. It would be interesting to see. When he was, yeah, I don't think it will ever happen. The youth but, setup didn't he? Didn't he play? Mm, I think he was number. No, eight, I just saw like eight. the positions he takes. Man, it would be interesting if he's mm. actually picked as a midfielder just to see. Like I've always wanted to see. Um, ben White also playing midfield. I just want to see what it looks like because the the technical skills are there. Um, yeah, Ben White is good pass of the ball. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, one yeah. Uh, one injury yeah. to uh, Calvin Phillips, and you might see it at the World Cup 2022. You never know. Get a Southgate will do it. Yeah, yeah. Southgate Southgate the man. Seven right backs. <laughs> <Forward season. laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, we're just going to do a couple of previews for our games this weekend. So, Nikita, you mentioned the Merseyside derby earlier on. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, this one, I think the, the Everton fans might be fearing this one more than anybody else because it's just like, they, like they, it's off the back of a 9-0 thrashing of Bournemouth. Everton hasn't, haven't been playing well this season at all, even like the back end of last season. They haven't been great as well. Lampard's under mm. a tremendous amount of pressure. So, mm. yeah, like, how, how do you think this one uh, unfolding? Uh, like, where do you think this game is going to be won and lost? And, like, who, who are you looking out for? <laughs> is, it, is it awful to say in the midfield because we don't have one? Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. I, I'm very concerned. We, our midfield is, is certainly lacking. And I think tomorrow night it will be shown up again. Um, but I mean, against against Everton, I'm always confident to go there and get the result. Um, just because they have been so awfully poor. I mean, they should have just spared us all and been relegated last season. Um, yeah. But you know, <laughs> but my bigger concern is obviously I wanted three points. We need to get our season back on track, and you know, with Champions League as well getting added now, we need to start getting that rhythm again of just winning and going on a winning run. But I'm really concerned about injuries there. Um, I mean, that, that Goodison derby, even without a Charleston, it's going to be hard. Um, and I really just want us to come out. But they have Neil Mopay now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mopay. Another just like You'll a... You'll take out someone. Lego, <laughs> leg breaker, scissors breaker. Yeah, and then, you That's know... That's when they bought him in time for the Merseyside derby. <laughs> yeah, just in time. Oh, yeah, remember when, when Van Dijk was out, got his ACL yeah. uh, torn? He, he got flagged for offside, eh? <laughs> he was like, like you know, for off um, but yeah, so for me, Liverpool win probably something dirty, like a 2-1, uh, and, and hopefully minimal injuries, fingers crossed. Yeah, what, what about Anthony Gordon, the 100 million pound man? Uh, yeah, for sure, he looks like it, I must please send him to Chelsea, he looks like Ross Barkley 2.0. What a He's the crazy. British Anthony. Yeah, but bizarre. Anthony, uh, no, <laughs> I don't. I really yeah. don't understand it. Did he not see that Ross Barkley got released from his contract yesterday? Like, yeah. why would he want to go play at Chelsea as a young player? Honestly, yeah, uh, exactly. Honestly, this cheap Cal- Callum Hudson Odoi. The examples yeah. are all there. What makes you think you're going to do it? Gone now. You just want to make bank. Yeah. Yeah. Tammy Abraham, same WhatsApp group. Um, the more Danny Drinkwater. Oh my word, forget about that guy. Wasn't Scott Parker like the first one who did it? <laughs> yeah. 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 It was Scott Parker yeah. and Gareth Barry went to City, eh? Was City, it? yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gareth Barry it was those City, two yeah. that started this nonsense. And now. <laughs> so yeah. Bunk. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the original is still Quentin Fortune, eh? Yo, guys. <laughs> 
What are the games are up this weekend, guys? Who's uh, the unbeaten Arsenal playing? <laughs> Who says yeah. they're going to be unbeaten by them? <laughs> Who are they uh, playing again? Are you? So you so you're saying that that Stevie G is going to get the dub? Keep him in the yeah, keep him in the job for like maybe one or two weeks, you know. Give nah, him a little yeah. lifeline, like nah, actually not uh, again. If if me comes to the carpet now nah, and and takes three points, nah, then I'm gonna burn my Arsenal. <laughs> Mings is a waste of space. You mustn't ever come there again and think he can dominate there. Yo, <laughs> like just uh, having tough on player manager style. Uh, that was a bit of a personal rant. Mings is probably a nice guy. I just don't like him as a footballer. So that's yeah. all. Mm. Look, um, I think we're going to see some rotation also in the in the elevens now with the games coming up yeah, thick and fast. So I think in the first four games, all the teams had the opportunity, other than injury, to feel like you know a settled eleven. Obviously, mm. certain teams yeah, yeah. but you know we were able to field pretty much a similar eleven all the way through. So now, when the changes come, it's going to be interesting to see if the chemistry uh, drops yeah. off a little. You know how about yeah. how's the plug and play options going to look? Because not yeah. everyone's Man City and guys just come in and out, um, yeah. and that's going to obviously impact the results. So let's see. Yeah, but but now that like see, like we can just like shine the spotlight a bit on the the Arsenal United game. Because I mean, one team like like we've mentioned before, they've hit their stride already, or they've like uh, like built some some consistency. But the other team is like trying to find this this stride still. So, like, where do you guys think that like that game is going to be won and lost? Because I mean, like both teams have uh, strengthened their team quite well in all in most areas of the park. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear. Zia, uh, Jason, do you want to go first? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm looking at it and I'm thinking of that game plan that that United had implemented when they had played Liverpool in that they were just gonna sit, you know. What game plan? And then they just put the ball over the Liverpool top. Liverpool be shit game plan. <laughs> well, I mean, fair enough, but there there were large parts where they sat and they obviously tried to counter mm. because of that speed, right? Yeah. Um, I think everybody's been raving about that that back four that we've had: Ben White, you know, Gabriel Saliba, who's been. Colossal nah, for me. Quality. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe Oteta's got that uh, Unai Emery masterclass in him. You know, send him on a loan. Send him in the wilderness. Bring him back. And now he's just going to be play of the season here yeah, for, for Arsenal. But I think it's yeah, it's, it's going to be a stern test. I'm thinking that front line versus our, our back line is actually going to be... It's going to be where, it, where it's going to be key. Because lots of our, our build-up obviously starts from the that back four, and they, they give us quite a bit of confidence once they step into that midfield area to overload and stuff, you know, then we start moving and fanning it out to the Martinelli's, the Saka's, the Odegaard's. So, yeah. That's going to be the big one. The players yeah. out wide against United's yeah. um, right and left back. Yeah. Right. I mean, what's the bit? Uh, Aaron plays now right back. One by six. Malasia, yeah. uh, bro. He's, he's impressed me the most out of all of us. So far. Who knows? No chance. Maybe Luke no. cracks the nod. No chance. But yeah, for me, it's Martin Alli. Martin Alli against that, uh, that, that way in mm-hmm. before that, that, that game. Maybe he stops eating donuts now till the weekend and he actually <laughs> makes it. Yeah. And then it's good. Um, but yeah, just just for me, I'm I'm thinking it's that, you know, that back four versus United's Somewhat. What's the prediction then? Hey? What's the prediction, the scoreline prediction, Mr. Rani? Yeah, you put me under pressure here now. I'm going to go and I'm thinking it's going to be a 2-1 to Arsenal. I'm thinking that, mm. yeah, I think we, we should be strong offensively and it's just whether we, we can actually keep them out. I, I do think that we, we should get something from that because as, as good as Martinez is, Varan, there's, there's still ways to actually break through them and I think Arteta is going to relish this game. Hopefully, mm, he doesn't pip it out and just overthink everything. But, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, do you want to do, say problem. something? Yeah, no, I just think it's going to be Martin Ali against Dano. Simple. Because mm. mm. once Arsenal mm-hmm. identify a yeah. side that's weak, they attack it yeah. and they attack it hard. So, and, and, and especially you, and Zinchenko's you in the it, mix, yeah. that left side's going to be crazy. Yeah. If, even if Zinchenko plays midfield, it could still be... 
Sinchenko, Tierney. I actually think Sinchenko and Martinelli go better together than Tierney and Martinelli. Because yeah. Sinchenko cuts in and Martinelli hugs the touchline. But when, yeah. when Tierney plays, then he overlaps and that doesn't suit Martinelli that much. Martinelli coming inside isn't, yeah, isn't as effective mm. as maybe running on the mm. outside. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. But also, Tierney's not the sort of system player. He's, uh, he's an old school defender, man. Put him, mm. what, uh, put him as like Robertson's understudy. I mean, obviously both like Scottish. They have very similar qualities. They'll run, they'll, they'll put crosses in, they'll be up and down in your face. And yeah, so but that's how they play together, right? So one plays at a left center back and one plays yeah. at a wing back. Generally, yeah, work, yeah, that's the generally they, how it works out they, well for them. They work very well, yeah. So I think if if Zinchenko doesn't start tomorrow, then he obviously starts Sunday. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, then it, it's it's definitely going to be left hand side also very very good uh, good mm. battle that could come. Yeah, you got and the score United prediction. Then. Just yeah, 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 score prediction if. Uh, if Arsenal score first, they'll, they'll win 2 1. But if they go behind, then I think it's going to be a 1 all draw. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm, I think I'm going with a 1 all draw, draw as well. 1 all draw? Okay. Yeah. I like it. I like I, I like it. Anthony is going to score <laughs> in the 84th minute coming off the bench with his first touch, like all debutants do against Arsenal. Huh? Yeah. What is that guy? This, uh, didn't Rashford also score against Arsenal on debut? Yeah, Rashford. Yeah. I mean, Rashford went on that hot streak. Right? Martial against us. He scored yeah. a brace yeah. at Old Rashford, yeah. That, that gets him an extra two years on the contract, you know? So. 100%. Yeah. And a bonus, and a signing bonus. I, yeah. I think, personally, it's 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 going to be tighter than what we think. Uh, I think it's hmm. going to be 2-2 two, two on the Ooh. day. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, some more FPL punter. Spicing it up, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would love it to know because I'm making a long-term investment in Saliba. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I As think two, two on a day. As we should all. Yeah. But yeah. Look, we we were we were talking about Arsenal's fixtures quickly before we we finish up. After this United game, I think it's Spurs, it's Liverpool, mm. and it's City mm. before that uh, big international break that everything like season takes a break. So that that's going to be interesting yeah. if we can do that well. That Everton, all, yeah. PSV, Brentford, Spurs, another Europa League team that I don't know. Ah, uh, Liverpool, Leeds, City. Jeez, it's, it, it yeah. is quite it's intense an... and the like, fixtures come thick and fast because between everyone I skipped or everyone I named, there was a Europa League game. So yeah. it's quite an intense period for you guys. But okay, man, let's uh, do that when we get to that bridge. Eh? Let's focus 100%. now. 100%. Hundred percent. Let's chat in a month and see how yeah. we do, how it's gone. But yeah, that's a wrap on today's episode of Three Four Three. Just a reminder that you, if you if you guys are joining us for the first time, then please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Sporticast and give this video a like and a share. Thanks, Jason, Tiad, and Nikita for being such amazing co-hosts as always. I'm A for Three Four Three. See you guys in a bit.